Hello, everyone out there. Uh, Nick Villars, Nicholas Randall Villars here, coming at you with a new thing we're going to do before each show, and that is um, just a tiny intro, just to let you know what's coming up on this episode of the Super Divorce Supercast. Um, this is our first episode back uh, that you're going to be listening to after an extended break. We will talk about what we've been doing during that extended break, where we are right now, and where we're going. So uh, you're going to get some answers from us if you have questions, if you've had questions. And uh, if not, then, um, hey, you're going to get answers anyway. Uh, you're going to walk away a learned person. So... Get ready for that. We're going to talk about uh, what we've got as far as new content coming out for all of you, Um, some new shows, and I don't mean live stage shows, though we will get into that a little bit as well. I mean uh, the shows that we're going to be releasing regularly um, in addition to this podcast. So more info on on those shows in this episode, and um, you know, then also some, some banter. We're, uh, we're going to go off uh, on uh, some adventures in conversation, as usual. So, um, again, thanks for tuning in. This is our first show with just Bender and I, and that's the way it's going to be moving forward. Unless we have guests, of course, which we do plan on uh, doing. But we'll get into that in the episode as well. So, anyway, without further ado, as they say... Um, Enjoy. We are not getting a divorce. We are not getting a divorce. We are not getting a divorce. Hello out there, you are listening to the Super Divorce Supercast. Hello ladies and gentlemen. It's been a while. Mm-hmm. Quite a while. Yeah. I don't know, probably months probably. Yeah, I think I had some months. Too long, that's how long. It's, uh, it reminds me of that classic song, uh, Stain. Which one? Stain? I think Stain, man. I think it was Stain, wasn't it? It's been a while. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Since I could hold my head up high. Yeah, I hate it. Man, Stain is the worst. Yeah. Well, I would take them over Nickelback, though. And Avenged Sevenfold, probably. I would probably listen to Nickelback over Stained. Really? Yeah. To me, Stained is just... I don't know. Nickelback's fun sometimes because they're so bad and their lyrics are awful and the music's terrible and it's just kind of like a comedy. <laughs> yeah. It's like a comedy comedy band. But, you know, Stained, they're just like such a downer, you know? It's weird to me that, like, there was that whole... I, was, I mean, I was a huge part of the scene, but the emo scene in the mid-2000s, you know? Yeah. Like, that was my thing. I'm still that kid. Yeah. But, like, Stained was not on my radar. I didn't listen to Stained when I was an emo kid, which is weird because they are the most emo band. Yeah, but they're more accepted by the new metal kids, I think. They were part yeah. of the radio rock era. Yeah, definitely. But their lyrics... And their vibe is definitely emo. Like, if... All they do is whine. Yeah. It's just whatever... Because I've never been... I wasn't an emo kid because I was depressed. I just enjoyed my chemical romance, you know? So I didn't really, like, fit that stereotype. But I pretended to, you know? Like... Yeah. So whatever I thought, like, my teenage angst was, Stained really kind of, like fits the bill for like this is me and every you know everything sucks my parents hate me but like i'm here and fuck them and everything and like but i just never listened to them i didn't express my emotions through stained well i feel like they're a good band for people who really don't have much to complain about (laughs) want to complain anyway yeah that's good sorry if you're a stained fan not really not sorry, really. but yeah, it's, sorry, not sorry. Yeah, one of those. By the way, um, this podcast is going to be just Bender and I, in case you were wondering what was going on. And all 
following podcasts will be just the two of us. Unless we have a, a special guest. That's true. I would like to... That is something that is going to change in future podcasts is that eventually, hopefully here soon, we're going to get some some guest hosts on here with us. Right. Yeah. So So we I guess we should talk about where we've been. I guess so we should. Just like, well, yeah. we took several months off and then just came back <laughs> and didn't tell anyone what was going on. So. Right. Well, where to start? However many people are listening that are part of the Divorce Club or follow us on Facebook, uh, I'm sure a lot of you know that we parted ways with our guitar player, Bob. And that's kind of where we've been. Because when that happened, Nick and I had to decide what to do next. And we landed on continuing as a two-piece. And that decision has needed time to fall into place and this podcast is signal that it is just now starting to fall into place finally finally after a couple months because if you've if you go from being a full band to going down to two people i mean there's a lot to get sorted you, you know yeah or it's not just like now i'm gonna pick up the guitar and i'm gonna pick up the bass and i'm gonna write all the songs you know there's a lot that goes into it um, as far as uh, where we're going to go musically, um, what the online presentation was going to be moving forward, what we wanted to do as far as getting content out regularly so that, uh, you know, we can continue building this little community, I guess, yeah. little network of uh, creative endeavors here and offering a little bit more than just an album every year or two. Yeah. So I feel like we have more to offer than that. And I think people who are following us deserve more than that. So do. this and podcast is just one piece of that puzzle. Yeah. So it is the, obviously the easiest piece to start with because all we have to do is sit in a room and talk to each other. Yeah. Very easy. But even this, you know, getting, getting the new uh, website, up and running so we had a place to put the podcast mm -hmm. and also upgrading the equipment so it sounded a little better and uh, upping the uh, production value so when you listen to this you heard an intro to the show and you'll hear an outro and you'll get that for every episode moving forward and like you said we're going to bring people in and uh, continue just shooting the shit like we always have yeah. but Trying to put a little more thought into it, I guess. Just a little, but we don't want too much structure that it's going to feel structured. Right. It's not going to be bullet points that we're going to only focus on for right. this amount of time. All right, yeah. time to move on, you know? Um, yeah. And I think we were kind of, you know, we were kind of doing that on the last podcast, in the last format, and... I, I mean, for a little bit. Eventually, yeah. we started just doing topics and then, and then just blowing one topic out of proportion for an hour and a half yeah which is which is great but i think one of the biggest things that isn't changing in the band but has moved to the forefront i guess is that nick and i are very much on the same page with like everything that's going on so while there are a lot of planning goes into this we also are just kind of like whatever we want to do, and then we just kind of do it. Right. We don't really have a lot to consider because we both know that each of us is on board with whatever the other wants to do. Yeah. So hopefully things will feel even more generic <laughs> than they did before. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I want to throw out there just to let you all know out in the audience that Mr. Nick Villars has been working incredibly hard oh thanks to bring you all of this i have been pretty fortunate that i just kind of get to sit on my butt and wait for nick to message me but you know he redid the whole website he is gonna start streaming on twitch himself he is making new logos he's learning new instruments for the band it's insane 
absolutely insane. It's fun though. It well, I'm glad you're so, enjoying yourself. Yeah. <laughs> if I was not enjoying myself, then I would not be so happy. But yeah, it's uh, I I'm having a great time. It, like you said, it's a lot to do. Um, but whenever I need something, you know, so I'm gonna jerk you off a little bit here. <laughs> you're right there. Anything I ask for, Bender's on top of it. So it's a great relationship that we have going on here. And hopefully that's going to come across in everything that we do. I think we're going to have a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, we're, uh, we're looking forward to moving forward with yes. everything. And, um, you know, not to leave everyone in the dark on uh, the Bob situation, you know, without going into too much detail. It's just one of those situations where um, it, for various reasons, um, just wasn't going to work out, I guess, is the best way of putting it. You know, it's not like, um, I, I feel like I don't hate Bob. Um, I've still, I, I've talked to him a bit since uh, the decision was made and Bender and I decided to, to move on without him. Um so it's not it's not a super weird situation, but um, you know it was just one of those things that I think it was perhaps building for a while, and uh, then it happened, and that's kind of left us where we where we are now, and um, we've been doing a lot of work to to get the momentum going again, so that that loss didn't sort of stop us for too long yeah. because something like that could totally ruin a band. You know, it could easily losing, just... losing his talent was like a crushing blow almost. Yeah. I mean, because you didn't... don't know what you're going to do. I mean, right. that's, that's your Bob was the main songwriter yeah. for as long as I've been playing with him, which was since uh, like very early or very late 2011, I should say is when I first got together with him. So through the various groups and whatnot, uh, losing that piece of the puzzle is, uh, it's really tough to, to figure out and to decide how you're going to go forward and, and, you know, you run through all the options. So, oh, is it time to go out and look for new people? Um, are we going to do without? If we do without, then what are we going to do with the sound? Mm -hmm. You know, which... There's been a lot of uh, a lot of discussion and a lot of work yeah. and thinking that's gone into picking up the pieces and moving forward. And um, I guess another thing that we we should mention is that moving forward, the sound is going to be changing pretty dramatically. Yes. So sorry to fans of our first album, but it is not going to be that music anymore. No, not not at even all. close. No. We, uh, well, I want to start with our sound by saying that once we decided to be a two piece and we also came to the sort of realization or we established that I'm pretty much letting Nick direct things and I'm just here to like whatever he needs, he asks of me and I'll do it. But, you know, he's really kind of in charge and I'm letting him move forward with everything and make a lot of the big decisions with, you know, with my help. I don't yeah. want to like, whatever, stifle my position. No, like, like but, you said before, you know, if you come to me and you say, well, we're going to play some pop country now, then you might have an issue with that. Yeah. So it's not, exactly. it's not that extreme. Right. But anything... I feel like is big. I do run past you at least. Yeah. And, and the thing is so far, I'm just on board with all of it because yeah. I love where it's going. So, but so speaking of where it's going, I, uh, I also want to point out that I really feel like this, this feels like your passion project. Like we've been very excited about, everything that we've put out since I joined the band, you know, we've done a full length album and two EPs between sleep star ignition and super divorce. And, you know, every time we wrote and recorded, 
you know, we made, we kind of thought, or it felt like, oh, this is like the best thing I've ever done. You know, this is miles above the last thing we did, especially with the full length album. Like I was, you know, impressed with the band. I was like impressed with myself, just like the amount of stuff we wrote, the quality of it, the time it took, and then the recording, you know, it all just really came together and felt really good. But even in the last couple of months where we've been discussing where to go and what to do, I can feel how excited you are. And I don't think that there's been this level of excitement in the band at all, period. And like I said, we say it every time, but this really feels like something you've always wanted to do and it's never really been an option because there's always one person that's like, well, I don't really want to do that. Right. And then you have to change your approach. Mm -hmm. Well, now the one other person in the band is just like, yeah, that's fine. That's (laughs) fine. Let's do it. That's cool. I want to do that. I don't care. It's perfect for my ego. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I'm not a very egotistical person, but if you are a creative type, I think that's one of the reasons why it's so difficult for bands to stay together is because you have four or five, you know, guys or gals together and usually all of them have a vision, yeah. something that they want and they have their idea of how the band should be. And um, maybe you get, you know, you get two people who are on board working against another two in the group who are sort of split and they have formed their own faction and they've got their own ideas because their their visions are a little more similar than the other two. And then they have to come together, these two sides, and kind of haggle with each other and, and sort of bargain and make yeah. concessions to get a cohesive vision to work. And in this case, we've cut out that other side and it's just two people who are very similar in their thinking about how they want this thing to go. So maybe I'm putting forward more of the uh the ideas but <clears throat> i feel like anytime bender has something to throw in it's usually gonna add yeah. to the uh to the quality you know there's not much that he's coming at me with that i'm shooting down really nothing so far yeah i'm sure eventually we'll have a disagreement we'll have to yeah, compromise does, that's, but... that's the way it works but the amount that's going to happen um is definitely lessened by the fact that it's just two of us now yeah so so with all that being said uh we are working towards becoming uh i don't even know what you want to essentially an 80s synth pop band yeah pretty much i'm sure we'll have a little we'll have some rock in there still but i mean if you imagine the best of like your new wave bands Mm -hmm. um, mixed with some of what's going on with like today's synth wave, like the stuff uh, that I've posted and uh, Mm -hmm. Carpenter Brute. Carpenter Brute. And, uh, you know, we've referenced uh, Disaster Piece, the It Follows soundtrack Mm -hmm. a lot. Uh, If anybody out there is watching Stranger Things, the, uh, the soundtrack to that, which I just learned today, is being released on vinyl as well. That's great news. Yeah. The band is called Survive. Uh, but the Stranger Things soundtrack, I mean, just imagine imagine vocal-less or lyric-less synth music, you know, very soundtrack-oriented. But then... Lay Nick's vocals on top of that, and then also give it like a very 80s pop, David Bowie kind of happy feel. Yeah. You know, with, you know, with live drums, obviously, that's my part. And and hopefully we're going to kind of fill or bridge the gap, really, between heavy, heavy synth pop and... 80s you know classic 80s pop right and kind of fill that void right in between there where you don't get bands that are using heavy synth but also vocals and live drums you know it's it's pretty weird that that's not 
been done yeah. a whole lot right now. I mean, if you listen to all these kind of synth wave, synth revival bands, I guess we could call them, um, that are calling back to the 80s, not many of them are using uh, vocals. All you know? I've there are a few heard... tracks where it's it's almost like an ambient vocal will come yeah. in from time to time. Robotic, a lot of yeah. robotic vocals. Yeah, but there's not one band that I've heard that has like full on clean singing right over top of it with like hooks with and, yeah, you know, just memorable vocal parts as well. Right, because a lot of these synth uh, tunes that are coming out now, you'll get like the synth part stuck in your head, but there's never a vocal there. Mm-hmm. There's never like that part of the song that brings you back. Right. And uh, that's good for us because it's it's not like an oversaturated market right now. So right. we might it's, be able to break in there yeah. and start our own movement. Who it's knows? something that we, yeah, exactly. It's something that we kind of get to, at least to our knowledge, we we get to kind of invent it almost or or at least be a part of it being invented and created. Not saying there aren't bands out there. Who right, are, exactly. But if anybody knows one, send them to us. I'd love to hear it and yeah, get some ideas exactly. on where to go. But right now, in all the research we've done and the bands we've listened to, you know, it's few and far between that we get something that we imagine where we're headed. Right. There's not quite anything like where we think we're going to end up. And that's exciting. It is exciting. It's very fun. I'm going to crack open a beer. I'm way ahead of you. I'm like three quarters <laughs> of the way done with this thing. Well, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, um, <clears throat> it's the season for this. Uh, Bender and I are enjoying a Rheingeist Franz Oktoberfest beer. It's very good. It's very good. Uh, Oktoberfest are my my favorite type of really? beers. Yeah. I, I love pretty much any Oktoberfest. I haven't had many that I've disliked. But Sam Adams is still my favorite. Yeah. I've really, you know, recently, I, I've kind of unintentionally really sort of sh- shied away from drinking. And also, I'm starting to shy away from drinking beer. I mean, the one time, the last time we all went out together uh, and we were at that Overlook Lodge, and I had that mixed whiskey, whatever it was. It was so good. And then right when we went to Arcade Legacy and I had a PBR, I was like, hmm, uh, yeah. whatever. Wasn't Which, doing it for you after the mixed drink? Not not particularly. <coughs> you know, and I was, at, I was at Blind Bob's last week or whatever week uh, the ladies were in L.A., and, you know, I had PBR then just because I don't really know what to order when it comes to to liquor drinks or whatever. But, yeah, I had two or three, and I was kind of like, eh, this is PBR and whatever. Yeah. You well, know? I mean, it is PBR. It is PBR. It's supposed it's not to be like, whatever, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but I, I, I really, even, I guess even with beers, like, I don't really, craft beers aren't necessarily, they don't sound appealing. They don't seem appealing. It's like if I'm going to spend four dollars on a craft beer or something then maybe i should just spend five dollars and get a liquor drink so it's know? not a lifestyle thing it's just you don't want to spend the money on beer oh you yeah have kind of yeah drink. it's kind of like if i'm gonna if i'm gonna spend that extra money and get like a nice beer i kind of feel like well i should just get a mixed drink instead so you want except, to move the cocktails yeah probably except i have no fucking idea <laughs> <laughs> like where to start with cocktails one time um Several years ago, I was out to a, a nice fancy dinner with my wife, Jessie, and uh, just for fun, I didn't, uh, I don't think I told her I was going to do it. Maybe I did. But in any event, the server came up and I asked what, what we wanted to drink, and I ordered a white wine spritzer. <laughs> <laughs> I'd always heard people talk about it. It's like one of those drinks. Like I didn't even know what the fuck was in it. Yeah. But it sounded hilarious, and so I just <laughs> ordered it. And I'm pretty sure it's like it's like white wine with uh, maybe like I don't remember. Is it seltzer water or 
or Sprite, something like that. It wasn't very good. Yeah, I'm sure it was. I, but white white spritzer. <laughs> but I think it's like the least masculine drink you could ever wear <laughs> yeah. as a man. Not that that really matters, but it's, no, I mean, it's funny. Yeah, it is. It's still funny. Yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, we got this podcast. We got some video shows we're going to be doing. That's exciting. Up. I'm excited to start the video shows. Yeah, um, we're going to do a comic-themed show, like comic books, and yes. then uh, we're also going to do one about horror movies. Um, Basically, our two areas of expertise. Yeah. At least so we like to think. If I can only get you into wrestling at some point. Yeah. Well, no. well, <laughs> I'm still... <laughs> Um, the 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 verdict is still out on wrestling. Well, we'll see. But for the meantime, uh, we'll have the uh, the horror show is going to be called Super Scary. Super Scary. And then the comic book show is going to be called Super Fanatics. Yes. Both of those, um, Super Scary, Super Fanatics. Those are one word deals there. Mm-hmm. No space in between. It's called a theme, people. We're yeah. using a theme. The super cast. Super scary, super fanatics, and then also my my streaming video game show. Oh yeah, yeah. super tokens, super tokens. <laughs> if you don't get that, let me t- uh, let me take you all back <laughs> in time a little bit. If you're too young to uh, remember going to the arcade, which you shouldn't be because you can go to the arcade now. Yeah, arcade legacy, yo. Yeah, arcade legacy. Well, the, the only thing is they don't use tokens. To, yeah. So they still might not get it. Dave and Buster. <laughs> well, he used cards. No, yeah, cards. No, no. What are we going to do? I don't know. So you used to use tokens at the arcade. Um, and this is a way that the arcades could get you to spend more money when you went in. Because you couldn't just take in a, a pocket of quarters and then maybe spend $5 and then leave with with the other $2 and quarters that you had in your pocket and, and buy a soda down the street. You had to go into the arcade, you had to put your money into the token machine, which would give you one token per quarter that you would have had, basically. So you get four tokens for every dollar you put in. But once you made that conversion, you have to spend it all at the arcade. So they've got your money. It's a clever clever little ruse they used to run at the arcades. Now the ones that we go to, Arcade Legacy, and then... uh, 16-bit arcade downtown in Cincy. It's the same way. Basically, if you buy drinks, then you can play games for free all night. Which is super fun. Yeah, it is. super awesome. I prefer that setup because you can go in and like buy one beer and play as many fucking games as you want. So cool. So, it's really neat. Um, But, yeah. That's a, a long story, long explanation of my streaming show, Super Tokens. No tokens required, by the way. You can tune in for free. Um, and, uh, yeah, my my name on Twitch is NV0816. So look that up. And um, also we'll have links on uh, our Facebook, on the Divorce Club page. And you can also get there by visiting superdivorceme.com. And uh, that's, a, that's the brand new website. You should check it out. Nick Nick designed it himself, and it is it is superb. Thank you. Yeah, we're, I feel like we're gonna make some some more additions as we go along, oh, but yeah. it's it's ready to be seen mm-hmm. at this point. It's gonna be it's it's set up in in such a way that you know today is the first day of getting the ball rolling, but once this ball starts rolling downhill, that website is gonna be filled to the brim. With oh, yeah. information and exciting things and upcoming things, and it's going to be you know it's going to be your one stop shop for everything super divorce. And that's the idea, so that you don't miss out on anything. Because yeah. if you're only following on Facebook, you know you, well, it's a guarantee that you're not going to see everything we yeah. post. That's just the nature of Facebook now. So I'm not going to sit here and bitch about that too much. That's why we have our own website. It's like Bender said, the one-stop shop for Super Divorce where you go on there, um, you, you can find every show that we're going to be putting out, um, and there will be links directly from that page to everything we're doing, news updates, all that crap. So 
uh, swing by there. And um, we also will have the, the Twitter feed um, visible the and, Instagram. and Instagram. So, we yeah. Get back on Instagram. Yeah, we do. Get back. Start. If we're going to, if we're going to start moving forward with all this other stuff, we might as well start moving forward with all our social medias too. And uh, since we're talking about the website, we do have copies of Wish You the Best for sale on yes. our official website. So you yes. don't have to go through Bandcamp now. You can just go to superdivorceme.com. Um, and I, uh, I believe you just go over to the, uh, the super store. That's the only item we have available right now. So uh, we have a very limited supply of them. I think there are like 40 left that we had made. So once those are gone, we're not going to be having any more made in the future. That would be it. It's like your little collector's item. Yep. So we obviously, you know, we're moving forward as Super Divorce, which, you know, was a decision in itself. Yeah. Be, you know, because, you know, losing, losing Bob, when we made that decision, moving forward, we knew we were going to have to change things around. It's like, okay, well, do we stay Super Divorce? Because we're not going to be the same band at all. Uh, you know, but we made the decision and obviously both of us are still extremely proud of the accomplishment that we did making a full length album. Oh, yeah. Like, so if you, you know, if you're a fan and you want that album, get it now because it's going to be your collector's item because we're not going to play that stuff live anymore. You know, you're not going to hear it places like we're acknowledging that it's there. We're very proud of it. It's always going to be a part of who we are as a band, but you know, we're 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 moving on to a whole new whole new way of doing things, and that way, you know, in the future when we're big and famous, you can go. Well, I knew them when they sounded like this. Right. I started watching when season one yeah. was airing. You know, which is kind of how I look at this. It's a new season. Mm-hmm. It's not a reboot. You know, we're not, not yet. Uh, that was something I thought about with the the podcast. Was like, this is. Uh, number 23 yeah but before we did it i was like considering should we take everything else down and like do a reboot and it's like i fucking hate reboots so, <laughs> the past like, happened it yeah. got us here uh-huh. you know you can go back and listen to that stuff it's going to be a lot different the podcasts are going to be a lot different the music's going to be different but that is where we came from that's how we got here so we are acknowledging it it's yeah. just we're not pushing that so it's almost like when they uh it's a little bit like when they brought back Buffy for season six and uh, it got dark, mm-hmm. you know, except we're going the opposite direction where we were kind of like Moody and Emo before and yeah. now we're like moving to a super happy pop direction. But still, you know, it's, it's very similar. Like it's, it's almost like, you know, if it had to end or if it was going to end, it was going to end on a pretty high note, you know, yeah. the Wish You the Best is a great album. But it doesn't have to end. It got brought back. But we're not, you know, we're not rebooting. We're just continuing on. That's right. That's the way to do it. That Too many really reboots good. now. Yeah. Yeah. Buffy season six. I you need to you. watch it. You're... We we actually just started watching again. Really? Yeah. Good. I feel like I go through these these little spurts where uh-huh. it's like, okay, now I'm watching Buffy again. And then something else comes out. And I feel like you have a bit more pressure. You feel this imperative to watch things that you're hearing about coming out like currently at the present yeah, time when people yeah, are talking about stuff mm-hmm. like stranger things oh okay, everyone's talking about the show you want to watch that if you're watching something older you know that's been out for years you don't feel as you know obligated yeah no one's talking about it right but i do love the show it's yeah it's a it's, great show it's we're on uh season i think getting towards the end of season three and actually, I think one of my favorite episodes, we just watched it. Um, it was like, oh uh, God, what happened? Where something happened to all the adults in town and they started acting like teenagers again. They were eating the, these chocolate bars. I think, I, I it, you know, it's been a while since I watched the whole series through okay. because I, I uh, was dating a girl in high school and she's the one that got me into it. You know, mm-hmm. she had all the seasons on DVD and I borrowed them you yeah. know, and watched them at home. Uh, so it's been probably since, since I was maybe 18 or 19 that I 
sat down and watched it all the way through, but I do, I feel like I recall at least that episode where yeah. the parents were going a little crazy. Yeah, and like Giles is like punk rock Giles. <laughs> <laughs> he like has yeah. his sleeves rolled up <laughs> and he's wearing like combat boots and jeans and he's like I smoking love, the entire time. I love Giles. He's yeah. so great. He is. What a great character. I would watch a show if it was just all about Giles. Yeah, I would too. That guy's a good actor. Anthony, uh, what is it, Stuart Head? Yeah. He's a great actor. Yeah. Very fun. Um, so, I, I, uh, back to the music real quick. I was thinking about if you watch some of these like current synth bands play live, I think one thing that's lacking is the stage show. Really? A lot of times it's a guy, from what I've seen anyway, not with all of them, but... I feel like if you just have a guy on stage with like a laptop and maybe a MIDI keyboard and he's not really doing anything, I mean, it's like, That's well, surprising to me because I feel like, you know, if you guys, you know, a good indication of where we're headed, guys, is look up, look up the music video for Turbo Killer by Carpenter Brute. Uh, I had actually seen it prior to you sending it to me directly. Uh, but it was a while ago and I, you know, I just kind of like saw it and I was like, oh, that's cool. And then moved on. Um, but really like one of the fucking coolest music videos yeah. I've ever seen. It's insane. It is so good. But so check out Turbo Killer by Carpenter Brute and that'll give you a pretty good indication of at least where we're headed, you know, musically, not, right. not like full band but but just what we expect to sound like, kind of, you know. Maybe sprinkle in a little of Madonna's first album. Yeah, sprinkle in some Madonna, you know. Obviously, imagine some live drums over it. Yeah. But but that's, you know, that's a really good indication. But so the style of that video and how exciting it is, it seems weird to me that, like, seeing Carpenter Brute live would just be kind of some dude like, whoa, we just yeah. play. You know, because it, it feels very EDM, very dubstep DJ-ish. Yeah. And that's, I don't know, I definitely am more excited about heading in this direction now because we play that kind of music, but then, you know, we have a drum set on stage and we've got you behind the keyboards possibly playing guitar as well. Live vocals, I mean, we're going to have a show for you guys. Yes, it's it going to be, be a, a spectacle. Show. Exactly. Something to come see. Uh, I'm sure, I don't know if you saw on Instagram, but when I was at Blind Bob's this, this past week, uh, I saw this band Daikaiju. Oh, with the fire. Yes. Yeah. Dude, seriously, like, Daikaiju, I, I talked to the guitar player after the show, and I just told him, I said, hey man, like, I'm a musician too, and your show is just an inspiration. Like, it was the most insane thing I have ever attended show wise they they were all in the crowd they were crowd surfing the whole time the drummer set his drum set on fire in the middle of a bar like no regard for for the bar at all i don't even know how they get away with it you know they might have gotten a talking to afterwards you never know i I, that's what's missing Exactly. A lot of live shows you go you, you to. Know, you know, you watch movies or you watch TV shows and you see people playing in bars and standing up on the bar and like kicking people's drinks off and all that kind of stuff. Daikaiju does that. Yeah. The, he was, the guitar player was on the bar for like a whole song. They, the, <laughs> the drummer started the show, okay, by, and now they're all instrumental. And they're kind of, they're, they're a surf rock band with, and they somehow have Asian influence in there. Like, it's very interesting, very awesome, but they all wear masks, so there's no talking. And at the beginning of the show, the drummer, they just like start pointing at guys in the crowd. And the drummer is like picking up his drum set and handing it to people. So basically what ends up happening is a group of, a group of guys, including myself, are holding up with our arms completely extended over our head. We're holding up two cymbals, the snare drum and the floor tom, okay? Then the drummer gets a bunch of guys together. They lift him up on a chair 
And then he proceeds to stand on said chair and play the whole entire first song, balancing his literal drum set on top of the crowd. It was absolutely phenomenal. And that is what you guys can expect, you know, from us. Like, we're not going to do the exact same thing. No. But it's going to be a show. We're going to show you something. It's going to be so, a visual feast as well as very ear-pleasing, at least I hope. Well, with the type of music that we have been playing, and I think in independent, emo, screamo, whatever, revival music, yeah. um, I think the cool thing to do is to look as disinterested as possible in a way. Like yeah. You don't want to look like you, you give too much of a shit. So it's a lot of guys kind of standing in one place and maybe moving their heads a little bit. Uh, but I think people are afraid to look silly. Yeah. And if you put forth that type of show, especially within the, if you're, if you're not like, if you haven't made it yet, let's say, if you're not a touring arena band or something, people see that and they're like, who the fuck do these guys think they are? But you have to do that, you yeah. know? Um, because that's, that's interesting. And I think part of the reason people really go to shows just for fun these days is because so many bands just get up on the stage and stand there yeah. and play their songs. And it's like, well, you can hear the songs play perfectly at home. Yeah. If you go out, I feel like you should be given a show. You know, it's, it's for example, obviously again with Daikaiju, it's like anytime they're at Blind Bob's now. I will go see them. Yeah. Because it was an experience. It would be it was, worth it. It was there was crowd interaction and that's something that you want to go out and watch and see. And yeah, and that's that's what we're we're gonna shoot for. You know, we wanna be that band that every time we're in town, you're like, oh shit, Super Divorce is in town, like we gotta go see them yeah. because it's crazy. Well, even some bands that I love, I hear they're coming around and I'm just like, Oh, that's cool, but I've yeah. seen them before. Yeah. You, I know what they're gonna do. But if you have a band like that, or, you know, um, even though he's not like my favorite, I feel like I'm more inclined to go see a Rob Zombie show uh, than some of the bands that I really love just because I'm going out. You yeah. Know, I have to leave the house. I have to drive to a big venue, but I'm going to see something that, you know, I'm not going to see again because... Mm -hmm. Unless you go to the same tour, like different dates on the same right. tour, you know that you're going to be getting a unique experience. It's like, you know, I am not a fan by any means, but I would see Guar at the drop of a hat. Yeah. Like, if, you know, I know they, they come to town often enough and I have never made it to a show. And But, you know, if somebody was like, hey, man, I got a Guar ticket, you want to go? Or or if, you know, if the stars aligned and I noticed that they were coming to town or whatever, I would go just because they're crazy. Like, yeah. they dress up in costumes and spray blood on everybody. I mean, mm -hmm. who, why would you want to miss that, you know? Yeah. It's exciting. Yeah. And it's not going to be on the scale of Guar, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, we're gonna we're gonna have fun, you know. It's we're gonna just put gonna together something that yeah. that you'll remember seeing live. If anybody saw us, you know, as Super Divorce previously already, you know, you you already know that we were we were pretty exciting on stage. I feel like you know we're moving in the we were moving in the direction that we're going now. Yeah, before. But I feel yeah. like now we're going to really be able to just blow the doors off the thing. and Because I feel like especially with our with our music choice and our direction, you know, now we're going to be able to we're going to be able to Ziggy Stardust it. Yeah. You know, and really get out there and be different. You know, I watched a really great documentary uh, the other day on a band that I really don't care for, but it was about Twisted Sister. Mm -hmm. And it was just talking about how they starting out were all, you know, they were glam rock fans. That's kind of what they wanted to be. And, uh, I don't know, long story short, they had like a paying house band gig, right? And during the, and it, the, the bar was set between a, uh, army base and a air force base. Well, during the week, you know, they're playing every night and they're dressing up like ladies, you know, they're whatever, they're trying to be, be glam rock. 
and no one's in the bar all week and everything. And they're like, well, this is fine. Like, this is cool. You know, we're getting paid and we're basically just like practicing, you know. Well, the weekend comes and all the soldiers are on leave. So this bar is filled with like 3,000 soldiers and they're going on stage in dresses, you know. I mean, the guitar player who I think is kind of the one constant through all the member changes that they've had. And then Dee Snyder, I would imagine, right? Yeah, he wasn't the first singer. Oh, he wasn't? No, I didn't know that. they had like two singers as oh. Twisted Sister before Dee Snyder, yeah, which I also didn't know. Yeah. Uh, the, the one of the guitar players is kind of like, he joined, he actually joined Twisted Sister. And then, but he remained the constant like through their fame. Okay. So the documentary kind of interviewed him a little bit more than most of the other uh, uh, performers. But anyways, he, you know, he was talking about how, like, he was about to go on stage in front of all of these military guys, you know, in a dress. And he was just like, this is it. This is where I die. I'm going to go on stage and these guys are going to kill us. Yeah. Because we're just in fucking drag, basically, trying to play rock and roll music. Basically on a military base. Yeah, okay. and they somehow just you know obviously didn't, and they yeah. got pretty famous. So it it was it was good, you know, and that's it got me excited. I was like, I want to fucking wear a dress on stage. Yeah. Why not? Like, Why not? Let's bring back this '80s ambiguous like yeah, you know, this just fun spectacle. Yeah, and that's that's what I want to see. That's what we I want to be for this. Well, I remember. After one of the last shows we played, this guy came up to me after we got done, and if you've never seen us, or if you haven't seen us recently, I've incorporated kind of a wrestling attire uh, into my stage show. So I'm wearing like the the wrestler tights, you know, and knee pads and kick pads, and then I'm, you know, basically uh, close to to nude other than that stuff but this guy came up to me after we got done playing and he's like you know i walked in and i looked at you and i was like what the fuck is this guy doing who the hell does this guy think he is <laughs> and he's like then i i listened to you playing for a few minutes and i was like okay all right i can get into this yeah. you know so people have to be i think caught off guard at first mm -hmm. in a way but then if you can grab them even if even if you've made like a, a connection on a negative level where their first instinct, their first reaction is to just look at you and be like, fuck off. Yeah. If you can evoke that reaction, you've obviously, you've gotten them and you've got a hold of them for a few seconds, a few minutes anyway. And then uh, if you can prove yourself during that time, then you might have made a new fan. Even if it just pissed them off to look at you <laughs> when they first walked in the door, you know, if they if they give it a second and, and you show them something, then you kind of you prove that that show is there for a reason. Yeah. So that's what we're hoping to do, and I think I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So um, thank you for being a part of it at the uh, very early phase and early stages because. Mm -hmm. Some of you, you know, might have been listening and, and been commenting on the page when uh, it was like the Star Squad. That's what the Divorce Club started yeah. as. And then uh, we became Super Divorce, became the Divorce Club there on Facebook, mostly. Kind of consider the Divorce Club to be anyone who's a fan of our music, though. Pretty much. There's no, like, membership due that you have to pay. No. Just, uh, if you like us... Get in the divorce club. That's it, pretty much. And uh, so we hope that you'll stick around and and take this ride with us, be on this journey with us, because it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna be putting out some cool shit. And um, yeah, I don't know. What do you want to do, like when we're rock stars? I want, you know what, honestly, my uh, biggest, like, the thing that I look forward to most is that if we make it, or when we make it. When we make it. When we make it. Too sweet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when we're, when we make it, when we're selling out shows, you know, playing in arenas, 
honestly, what I want to do more than anything is give back to fans. Like, I just fantasize about the opportunity to, like, have meet and greets or, you know, people that have been here since the beginning to, like, see them on the stage and then bring them backstage. Like, that's what I want to do. I want to get to a point where I'm famous enough that I'm recognized and then I can use that to just make cool experiences for the fans. That's honestly where I am. I'm right there with you on that. That's all I want to do. Because it's not, um, you know, you can trust that in this group, in this duo, um, our, our aim and our drive is not to like live in, in huge mansions or to have like a, a, a garage with 50 classic cars in it. Yeah. I, I sincerely like Bender. I want to make great experiences for people and I want to inspire people the way that my heroes and my idols have expi- inspired me over the years. Exactly. Um, because that's, that's what got me into playing music in the first place was seeing a particular show that I felt like, just kind of it gave me an idea and it gave me a clear um i guess a clear sight of a path that i could take in life and um that was playing music for a living and since that day that's what i've been working towards and i hope that uh that in some way that's what we can provide for other people even if it's not playing music if they can look at us and say, oh, those guys did it, mm-hmm. you know, I've got this little dream kicking around in my head. Maybe I can make that happen. And that's what I want to provide for people is the yeah. uh, the courage and the belief in, in themselves that they can make that happen. Yeah. You know, I've had, <clears throat> I've had enough experiences myself where, you know, I've met some famous people, you know, let's, let's just say, and even just like the smallest interactions, you know, if I, I go, I go to a lot of conventions where I meet celebrities from horror movies, you know, and every, every now and then there's somebody that I'm really looking forward to, to meeting. And when I get that chance, even just that, two to three minute interaction, you know, where I'm shaking their hand and I get to tell them how much I love what they've created or what they were a part of, you know, and then just saying thank you. Yeah. Is, is what I want to do for people. You know, I, I hope that one day it gets to a point where somebody will, could come up to me and say, I really love what you've created and I can just personally tell them, thank you. Mm -hmm. Let me do something for you. Like, you know, whatever, some something silly like here's the drum head from the show I played tonight. You know, or whatever. Like, yeah, it's it's. I don't know if it's like something that I want personal satisfaction out of, but it just feels good because I feel inspired when somebody I look up to or someone whose work I really enjoy is just a nice person. Like, yeah, it's you know. It, it's, it's good to know that those people that you're investing your time and energy and, and your love into are good people. Right. And, and, and the feeling that I get is something that I wish to be able to give someone else. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a great feeling. You know, even if you are like I was recently, you know, and I, I feel like I, for the most part, there aren't many people that I feel like I'm reduced to stammering in front of, you know, yeah. but when I went to um, Megacon and I got to meet David Hayter, uh-huh. the voice of Solid Snake and Big Boss, of course, from Metal Gear, um, like I, I watched his Q&A and I was in the same room as him and I was like, oh, this is sweet, you know, I'm going to wait in line after this and get his autograph and, and you know, get a picture with him. And <clears throat> even through the line, I'm feeling cool it's like no big deal it's just david hater yeah but then you actually get up face to face with them and it's like <clears throat> uh yeah thanks uh uh-huh. can you sign this and you're like you know trying to not shake or yeah. make an ass of yourself 
it's uh it's funny that someone else's presence can do that but it's usually because they've had a, a very big impact on you in some way uh-huh. and and to have that feeling and to have that um that sort of trepidation and that nervousness met with kindness is awesome yeah because if you got up there and you're a little you know kind of choked up or you're at a loss for words in a way you don't know exactly what to say to sort of be met with reassurance they're like hey thanks a lot you know uh-huh. and they're they're not being a dick you know they're not making fun of you or anything like that that's that's really neat because i'm sure some people you probably paid it 50 bucks, 100 bucks to get up there at their table for five seconds and they don't really give a shit. Right. They don't care. And that'd be an awful feeling to have. Luckily, so, I've not run into that yet. But, you know, it's, it is it is out there. Like, it happens sometimes. People, people sign up to do these conventions and they don't really want to do them and they just kind of like brush you off. I kind of sort of had that when I met Gunnar Hansen. They do? But, well, John Cusack was at MegaCon, and I really, yeah, I didn't, I didn't get to meet him. Uh-huh. I didn't even see him when he was there. I, I was doing something else when he was signing, but I heard later that like, um, he had worked out an arrangement with the people running the show beforehand that he would not hold up any boom boxes if someone <laughs> brought one in. That's funny. <laughs> he wouldn't hold up any boom boxes, and he was also wearing a do rag. And sunglasses while he was like signing all the time. Yeah, what a douche. like it's John Cusack. What? I okay. You can wear what you want to, but like I feel like if people are going to a, a convention to meet you, they're not expecting John Cusack in a do rag. <laughs> <laughs> You're just gonna look like some. Hey, check out this picture of me and John Cusack and your and friends. People are like, like, really? That's what? John Cusack. It's just like a guy in a do rag, like. Doesn't even look like I don't know. It just that seemed kind of weak to me. Yeah, I I don't know. I think oddly enough, the the first convention I ever went to and the first person I ever met, first celebrity, uh, was Sid Hay from uh, House of a Thousand Corpses and Devil's Rejects, Captain Spaulding, and uh, it was it was almost like. Uh, a, an experience that I like, you know, was going to ruin conventions for me because he was nice and he signed, you know, he signed my movies and stuff. He was, he was cool and everything, but he, it seemed like he didn't really want to be there. Yeah. You know, well later, I, I think I kind of got my faith restored, so to speak, because later I was talking to, uh, another, um, uh, Noah Hathaway from never ending story. I was talking to him and who one of the nicest people by the way and he was saying that Sid was working on like four movies at the time literally and was just kind of you know he does conventions all the time and I'm sure the man was just tired yeah you know so it was kind of like an okay don't base your whole experience off how this goes yeah you know? and then So, you know, something like that happens and then you end up talking to Noah Hathaway for 30 minutes Mm -hmm. and that's, that's what it's about. And that's, that's what I want. I hope to be able to give back to people one day, you know, where I can make somebody's day because I took 10 minutes to talk to them and just, you know, get to know them. That's, that's, that's exciting to me. And that's, that's what I love. And hopefully I'll get to do that. Hopefully I'll get to make people feel the way I feel when I meet celebrities and musicians. Well, um, yeah. It's good stuff. But, uh, yeah, we've got, uh, we've got more stuff to talk about, but maybe for, uh, for this episode, we'll, uh, we'll cap it with that. I feel like it's a good place to cap. Yeah. Good. So. Uh, good. This is what we, this is what we, planned on you know and not planned is just kind of like hey we're back yeah this is what's going on we just want to let you guys know you know and you know if you've been listening 
from the first podcast or the 15th podcast or, you know, or if this is your first one, you know, we just want to thank you for being here and sticking with us. We really do have a lot in store. Obviously, we've gone over it a little bit. Some YouTube videos coming out. Nick's going to be streaming on Twitch. New music. New we got to... Uh, we're, you know... It's it's going to be fun. Our, al- our album... We're planning on having an album out next year. Yeah. September 29th, 2017. September 29th, 2017 is going to be Super Divorce 2. Yep. You know... And it's going to be so fun and completely different, and it's going to blow your underwear off. Get ready. Get ready. (laughs) The hype train starts now. (laughs) Yeah, and just real quick, that's something that I was talking to uh, my buddy Jason about earlier today. Um, All these bands are just dropping albums now. You know, it's like, hey, this happened. Yep. Ta-da. Check it out. Go to iTunes. There's an album there now with like no lead in, no hype. As Bender said, the hype train starts now. Yeah. So leaving the station. September 29th. It's a Friday, 2017. Hell yeah. That yep. means it's going to come out. You guys are going to listen to it and you're going to want to party all weekend. That's right. It's going to be like weekend at Super Bowl. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll uh, we'll catch you all later. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, come back next week. Be here every week. Every week. Every week. Every reels. <laughs> <laughs> all right. See you guys. First show back, the first show back of many shows uh, coming up for you each week. You can count on it. So subscribe, tune in. Um, every Tuesday night, we're going to have uh, a new one of these for you. So you can always go to superdivorceme.com and navigate over to the uh, supercast section of the show. You can uh, Check us out on iTunes. Just look up the Super Divorce Supercast. And um, you can subscribe on iTunes. You can subscribe on SoundCloud. And if you're using a a random podcast app, you can also subscribe that way. However you prefer to listen, that's how we prefer you to go about things. So we're not picky. As long as you're listening to us, that's awesome. That's a thumbs up. So again, thanks a lot. Hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back next week. Don't know exactly what we're going to be talking about yet, but hey, that's a little surprise for you. So come back and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Super divorce.